Hello, you people out there. This is Michael of the Two and a Half Stooges, and welcome back once again to another Game Maker video. So, the last one of these was about reading and writing text files, and I said at the end of that that I'd be getting to binary files in this video, and that's what I'm going to be doing. So, like I said before, before I start, this is a lot more hardcore computer science than most other things that you will be doing in Game Maker are. This is going to be dealing with the ones and the zeros and well, maybe not that low, but the bytes, the 8-bit chunks of data that get stored on your computer's hard drive. And if you don't have at least a basic understanding of how that works, I would suggest that you go and do that. Um, there are other websites on the internet that'll help you with that more than I probably could. Anyhow, I'm going to be assuming that you've done that. And I'm going to be creating myself an empty room as always. It's going to be basically just uh, the runner of this program. They were going to be running stuff from the creation code and uh, doing experiments and stuff. And like I did with the regular file I.O., I'm going to be starting out with a local variable called f. And f is going to be instead of file text open, it's going to be file bin open. And this is going to take, once again, the file name. And I'm going to be calling this file fbin.dat just for the reason that I want to differentiate it from a text file. The extensions of the file that you're reading and writing from and to don't really matter. They're just for Windows to know what to do with it if you double click on it. Other programs are really pretty uh, indifferent about it. You can call this uh, fbin. this if you really wanted to, but that's probably not a good idea because I don't want to be pronouncing that every time I talk about the file that's being opened. In any case, this is going to take another argument and this is going to be the mode of access. And this is going to be either 0 for reading, 1 for writing, or 2 for both. 2 I'm not really going to be using because I'm just going to be either reading or writing from the files at the same time. If we're going to be both reading and writing to a file, that gets really weird for reasons that I'll be pointing out later. Now, also as always, you're going to want to close this when you're done with it. Uh, as with text files, you can have up to 32 of them open on your computer at the same time, but you probably don't want to have that many open. Try and just stick with um, one or maybe two at the most. Anyhow, let's get to writing. So, let's be saying file bin write byte. I completely butchered that. Uh, file bin write byte, and it's going to take, that sounds really weird when I say it fast, the file that you're writing to and the value of the byte. Now, as I hope you all know by now, a byte, 8 bits, uh, 2 to the power of 8, can be any value between 0 and 255. So I'm just going to take a nice round 100 and write that to the file, and then we're going to close it and then we're going to be done. So let's hit F5, run the program, and over in this folder, that should be familiar to anybody who has watched the, uh, the last video that I made, fbin.dat has appeared, I'm going to open that in Notepad, and you can see a D has appeared. Really? D? Is that so? So, what's going on with that? Uh, you should have an idea of what's going on with that if you have done your homework and gone up and looked at how binary and ASCII character codes and stuff work. But now we're going to be reading 1, the access mode of read. And instead of saying write the byte, actually I'm going to leave that in and I'm just going to comment that out for later. We're going to be, uh, just like we did before, show the message, we're going to cast it to a string, and we're going to take file bin read byte from the currently open file. And let's see what happens. What did I mess up? Oh, wait a minute, I have the wrong access mode here. 1 is write, 0 is read. Uh, I hope I didn't tell you to uh, to write with 0 the first time, but I don't think I did, so it didn't give me an error. Anyway, it's going to tell us that it read 100 out of this, even though, quite clearly, it would appear that the value is a D. And that is going to be because if you were to go on the internet and look up a table of ASCII characters, if you were to go to the decimal value for 100, you would see lowercase d. This is probably not the best table because I can't highlight certain things, but that's an ad, get out of there. That doesn't really matter. So, that is how binary works. The way text files work is that they're basically just strings of numbers. Uh, ASCII values between 0 and 255 that happen to form letters. Uh, for example, d is 100, e is 101, f is 102, etc. Uh, capital A is 65, in case anybody's wondering. And if I were to just change this to capital A, save the game, and uh, run it once again, you would see that instead of 100, you get 65. 
And probably more than a couple people are wondering, what's really the point of this? And I'll be honest, there isn't really anything here that um, you can't just do with just file text IO. But there are some things that this does slightly better. For example, say you don't want just any common user to be able to open up a file and, um, and be able to mess with it and not have the game crash and, say, manipulate your program from the inside. Or at least you don't want to be, them to be able to do so so easily. Say you happen to have an INI file or a, a plain text file that stores, I don't know, the amount of money your character has at any given moment in the game. And you don't want them to just be able to open up the file, uh, add a couple zeros, and suddenly have the game be insanely easy. You could use binary files to just make that much harder to do. Um, so that all they'll see if they write... Let me change this back to um, access mode of uh, write and get rid of this and uh, write some weird value like 162 or something like that. Now say there's an important value that happened to be 162 or something, when you go into fbin.dat, you'd see this weird thing and you have no idea what the skiddy that means. And it's not perfect because obviously a user will theoretically be able to open up the binary file in their own binary file reader, read the data, and then manipulate it that way. Uh, in the case of programs like uh, Pokesave or Pokegen for Pokemon save files, uh, for example. But it does make it a little bit safer. Uh, another thing is that you may have noticed that you're at the value 162. If this was plain text, this would take up three characters. This would take up three bytes. But because binary files are in base 255, this only takes up one byte. You can store value up to 255 in just one character. So if you, for example, wanted to store tremendous numbers of uh, small byte values between 0 and 255, uh, say on the scale of like between 1 and 50. If you wanted to score, for whatever reason, 5,000 of those. In plain text, that could be easily 5, 10 kilobytes, but in binary files, that would be exactly just one character uh, per number. And you would reduce your storage space quite considerably. That isn't too impressive in this day and age, when hard drive storage capacity is on the order of terabytes, uh, increasingly common, at least several gigabytes. But back in the day, it was fairly important to manage your memory that way, and it is something that, if you're serious about making games, you should at least be aware of doing, in case you ever need it for whatever reason. Now, if I were to jump over to Studio and import it, this works basically the same as text files do in the last video that I made. You just drop it in an included file, you could run the game, this is the same thing that, uh, that I was just working with in 8.1, and it'll work just fine. I still have to finish this compiling. Come on. Thank you very much. Hmm, nothing popped up. Wonderful. Oh, right, that's because I was still on writing. Um, but if you were to read it and then run the game... Come on. Today, Game Maker. Uh, you see I get the pop there, 162. It works the exact same way. You can read, you can write, you can do whatever. As always, I'm going to be uh, putting this in a studio archive and putting that up for download in the uh, description of this video, but jumping back over here, I'm just going to talk about these files a little more in the end of the video because uh, there isn't too much to say about this. The functionality here is rather limited. You don't have a bunch of the um, the nice automatic string or real number features that you do in text files. Uh, if you were to bring up code help and see the complete list of binary file operations, all you can do is open them, close them, uh, change the position so you can jump around a certain number of um, bytes in the file. Uh, you can rewrite them. This is basically erasing the contents and starting over from the beginning. Uh, you can jump to an exact position. You can't do all the fancy read string, read whatever, uh, end of line, since there really is no end of line in binary files since it's all um, individual bytes. If you want to actually store a letter or something, you're going to have to translate it into a, uh, into a number. And the way you do this, some people may recognize this uh, ORD from getting keyboard input. Uh, but the ORD function is used for more than getting keyboard input. Uh, if you were to say the ordinal of, say, capital T, and uh, run the program, that will convert a capital T into a number, and it'll write it to the file. And then if you want to happen to, uh, to read that, if you just read this on its own, I'm going to change this to a zero. Uh, uncomment that, comment that. Uh, we're going to run the game again. And this is going to be an 84, which... If you were to go up to this lookup table, table uh, 84 happens to correspond with a capital T. And if you wanted to change that back into the string of a capital T, 
you would have to go and use, um, instead of uh, the string function, chr. And that converts the value between 255 to uh, whatever character happens to be on this table. If you have a number that happens to not be uh, a punctuation or a letter or a number or whatever, um, it's going to give you a weird value. Depending on the font that you're using, uh, it'll probably just show up as either uh, nothing at all, uh, an invisible character that isn't represented by anything, or one of those weird like character not found box sort of things. I'm not exactly sure what you call them. But that's about it for binary files in GameMaker. That was more advanced, more hardcore computer science, like I said before, but it could be useful for some people, depending on what you want to do with this. For now, the next one of these videos I'll be getting back on topic with the little platformer thing that I've been making. But for now, I hope you all enjoyed that and uh, got something useful or interesting or both out of that. Rate, comment, and subscribe. Watch some of the stuff I've uploaded, and I will see you later.